feels like yes yesterday that I, I caught up with you guys talking about Tekken 7, but in the meantime, and this is just a couple of months ago, there's been a lot going on. So we got a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. First of all, let's let's start at this event. Let's start at Gamescom. Uh, you announced Lee is coming back to the fray. Uh, what, what's the significance of, of bringing him into this game? There's actually two major reasons for uh, including Lee this time around. One is his role in the storyline is always uh, quite major because of his relation to the Mishimas. So there's that. But then also, you know, just as a, a character to play, he's quite popular among uh, the fan base. So as Harada and myself often get from Twitter, uh, he was one of the, the more frequent requests, I think. Interesting, and yet the Mishimas are, of course, at, at the sort of at the center of everything that you're talking about here. And we got to see Kasuya as, as a as a young guy. Is that something that you're bringing in? Is that just for the story, or is that something you'll be able to explore in other modes as well? Or what, what's the? Well, the game's uh, still in development, so there's a lot of stuff we can't uh, touch on much yet. Uh, he's one of them. But as you saw, he's in the story mode that is kind of a special content uh, where, he, as you said, the young Kazuya and his father Heihachi are facing off against each other. Uh, we can't really say more, much more than that. Right now, he's envisioned this kind of special content for the story mode. Uh, but please look forward to more info or play the game when it comes out. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think equally exciting is that young Heihachi, because he's always been old, it was nice to see him there. Yeah. Tag two, he had the true. full hair, but so so um, and and and, but it's not just about that. You've been to Evo as well. Brought up a couple of new characters there, uh, and I think the one that's sort of most interesting to me because it's it is Raven, but it's not Master Raven. Mm -hmm. um, what what sort of what sort of motivation is it to to sort of come in with a new character there that sort of has some of that Raven and. Where, where does they fit? Well, for those who know much about the original Raven, uh, he was always kind of part of this organization that, although the Tekken world is, is fictional, if you were to uh, kind of compare it to something in real life, it would be like the, the United Nations, that kind of uh, world governing body is kind of the, what they belong to. And we always had that background setting that uh, Raven is kind of like a code name. Uh, and that there are various different Raven within that sp specific unit. So we wanted to uh, portray the boss, you know, what if there was one that was even stronger than Raven, uh, his, his commanding officer per se. Uh, so that was, you know, one thing that we wanted to portray in the game. But at the same time, uh, if you've noticed, Tekken has never had an African-American uh, female character before. So that was something else we wanted to try out in the game and to kind of see reactions from fans. Interesting. Speaking of fans, Bob is a fan, fan favorite, uh, and he's a very sort of particular kind of character. What do you think it is about Bob, and why do you feel it's important to bring him back? There's probably various factors for him being popular. One of them is the gameplay mechanics themselves. Uh, you know, he's got some, like a step similar to the Mishima's, the, the wave dash. Um, so he's very, uh, he has a lot of options movement wise and just the controls in general are something that's probably very popular among the fans and why they like to play as him. Uh, but the character himself, the concept that, you know, he's this very large guy uh, that moves very quickly and since games are themselves fiction, it's kind of entertaining, I guess you could say, to perhaps see the gap between something that you wouldn't see in real life, that this, this huge guy moving so quickly. Uh, is these are probably some of the factors that uh, are why he's popular. I think we've we've covered sort of the the new announcements now, uh, but you did put a little emphasis on Claudio, and and of course for for players who only play the the, the console games, he's still new character. Uh, so, uh, but he has a significant role in the story and, and and a big part to play. What what can you say of Claudio and 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 where he fits in and. Well, as you said, uh, Claudio is, is new from Tekken 7, so people who haven't played in the arcades, that's a brand new character to them. And uh, so we, we, we think that many people will be surprised that such a new character is kind of uh, included in the main storyline like that. So we just wanted to show, uh, portray him, you know, he's part of a group of exorcists called the, the Archers of Sirius. And so 
uh, you know, Heiachi, who's currently in control of the Zaibatsu, uh, approaches them. Uh, how he f found out about this organization and why he's approaching them is something that's unknown, uh, but that's something that will be portrayed in the story mode. Interesting. It's been a it's been a quite a long journey with Tekken 7, perhaps even longer than I mean this kind of game typically takes that road of arcade and then iterations on iterations. But you've had uh, arcade and then Fate of Retribution, and now you get in console, so you've sort of been able to build the game all along. What's the benefits of that, and sort of why did you take that approach? Well, actually, Tekken, we've always developed it in this manner that uh, arcade release and then, you know, the players kind of help us balance the game as it's out. We see what they're doing and we polish it and uh, add the content, for example, characters and such. And this was the case even before we were able to update online. You know, we would actually swap out the hard disk, etc. So this is something that we've always been doing, but it may seem uh, original because the market has changed that, you know, there's not very a big emphasis for other games on the arcade, so it might seem different. But for Tekken, it's something, uh, approach we've always kind of had. But it does allow us, as you said, to polish the game, to add new content. And even, for example, after 7, we released uh, Fate of Retribution Expansion, I guess you could call it, in which even new gameplay mechanics were added. So it has uh, allowed us to uh, add more depth to the game, not in just content, but the strategy involved as well. Well, and also another thing that's interesting about arcade games is that, for example, uh, a console game, you can pay the 60 or 70 euros and play it as much as you like, but uh, arcade is kind of a pay-per-play. For example, each time you play, it's uh, one euro, which is quite you know substantial for just one, one play time. But uh, so that means that if the game's not very interesting, then people stop paying for it. So the fact that uh, Tekken 7 is uh, so popular in the arcades uh, can kind of give you the idea that uh, the game is well polished and that it is, uh, you know, a pretty good uh, addition to the series this time around, even before it hits the console. So one final question. Uh, speaking of that sort of building on, do you envision the console release of Tekken 7 as an as a end date or do you think that there is room for, to improve and, and build on that as well? Well, personally, he's always thought that fighting games were best uh, made as like a package. You release it, the players, they enjoy it for however long they want. And then when you want to do something new, like change the gameplay mechanics or content, you release a different package. Uh, he always thought that was the best model for fighting games. But, you know, recently with uh, the digital uh, purchases and such, it's a lot of people, the players especially, are saying that they don't mind paying, that they still want to see some new content after release. So since the, the voices there are becoming more and more uh, larger, I guess you could say, it is something that uh, we want to think about and uh, seriously and perhaps change our, our point of view. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming today. Thanks. It is up to me. I must stop Heihachi. You killed my mother. Even if this power consumes me and kills me in the process. This ends here!